Umar al-Khattab during his Khilafah, he went to the area of Khaybar. And Khaybar is an area that has a lot of uh, trees, even to this day. And so he went to this area and it was midday. And so he sat leaning against a tree under its shade and he was taking his Qaylula there. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the whole Ummah and he's taking Qaylula underneath a tree. And so he fell asleep and a woman from the Arab was in the area and saw amongst all of the people, she saw Umar al-Khattab sitting down, not knowing who he is. And so the narration says she comes to him, فَمَسَّتْ قَدَمَهُ She tried to wake him up by touching his feet. So Umar al-Khattab wakes up and he sees this lady and so he says, مَا لَكِ مَا حَاجَتُكِ يَا أَمَتَ اللَّهِ Like, what's going on? What's your need, O servant of Allah? And so she responds by first saying, تَوَسَّمْتُ فِيكَ الْخَيْرِ that of all the people that I've seen, I see some goodness in your face. He's asleep and she still sees goodness in his face. So she says, I see something good in you. And she says that Amir al-Mu'mineen, again, not knowing this is Amir al-Mu'mineen she's speaking with, sent to us, she's from out of town. And she says, she sent to us last year, Muhammad ibn Maslama to collect the money from the rich and to give it to the poor, to collect the zakah and distribute it to the people of that area. And she says that, but he didn't give me anything. She says, and I'm a woman who takes care of orphans, but he didn't give me anything. And so she says, and news has reached us that Amir al Mu'mineen is again sending the same man, Muhammad bin Maslama, to our area again to collect the zakah and give it again. And so I'm afraid I'm not going to get the zakah a second time in a row, you know? So she says, this is where, where she said to begin. I see some goodness in you. She's saying, so can you come with me to, Hamad, to, to Muhammad ibn Maslama? Come with me to him and let's talk to him. So that way, inshallah, when he comes in the coming year, he'll make sure he, he doesn't leave me out, right? So Umar al-Khattab, his servant boy was next to him. His name was Yarqa. And so he tells Yarqa, Yarqa, go to Muhammad ibn Maslama and call him to us. And so the woman, uh, she kind of got, got startled by that. And she says, Inni lam urid hadha. Like, this is not what I intended. I wanted you to come with me, we go to him. Like if I'm asking for a favor, like it looks bad if I'm telling him to come to me, right? So she said, Let, let's go together. And Muhammad al Khattab says, okay, it's okay. If he doesn't come to us, we'll go to him. So Yarqa goes to Muhammad bin Maslama and he tells him, Amir al Mu'minin yadruk. So the narration says, فَاسْتَنْكَرَ هَذَا he, he didn't like that. Like he knew he, this, at this time, the midday, if Amr al-Khattab is calling you, it's because of an issue. <laughs> There's something going on. So he says, Masha, no, like, what, what, what's, what's up? Like, what, do you know why he don't wants to talk to me? And he says, uh, no, except that I saw that there was a woman next to him. And so Muhammad ibn Maslama comes, and he finds Amir al-Mu'mineen just where he was, under the tree. And so he says, As-salamu alayka, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen wa rahmatullah. As-salamu alayka, ya Amir al-Mu'mineen wa rahmatullah. He, he greets him with the greeting of salam, but he says, Amir al-Mu'mineen, and who's there listening? The woman. <laughs> so when she heard Amir al-Mu'mineen, the narrator says, فَاسْتَحْيَتْ وَجَمَعَتْ جَمَعَتْ عَلَيْهَا ثِيَابَهَا It's like, you know, let's say you, you go to talk to somebody, your shirt's kind of like untugged and you're unbuttoned and whatnot. So when she realized she's in front of Amir al-Mu'mineen himself, she kind of like picks everything up and took a step back. And so then Amir al-Mu'mineen begins addressing Muhammad bin Maslama. And he says, أَتَدْرِي كَيْفَ كُنَّا وَأَنْتُمْ قَبْلَ الْإِسْلَامِ Do you know how we and you were before Islam? And Muhammad al no, he knows he's in trouble. He says, Ya Amr al-Mu'mineen, la ta'ajal alayhi. Oh, Amr al-Mu'mineen, don't, don't rush to judgment. And then he says, Kunna akala ta'ra'as, wal arabu jami'an adauna. We were a very small number and we were poor and all of the Arabs around us were enemies to us. And he says, Ya Amr al-Mu'mineen, la ta'ajal alayhi. Oh, Amr al-Mu'mineen, don't, don't rush to judgment. Just give me a chance. And he says, and I sent you last year to collect the money from the rich and to give to the poor and you didn't give this woman anything? And then he says, Amr al-Mu'mineen, if that's the case, I, I'll, let me tell you something. It was not intentional. Either I, I, I missed her, I, I, just, I just messed up, or maybe she didn't even come to me in the time when I was there. But it wasn't intentional. Amr al-Khattab tells him, then in the coming year, this year when you are going to go there, make sure you give her the zakah from last year and the zakah from this year as well. And then he tells the woman, Ilhaqi ila Khaybar, go, you know, go to Khaybar and we will amur lucky, I am going to give you as well something now to go back to where you came from. So this narration is very interesting, but there's a couple points I wanted to mention from it. And the first is the mercy and the lutf of Allah. The mercy of Allah. I mean, this woman is in a, in a land she doesn't know anyone in. 
And from all the people she could have went to to ask for help, who did Allah guide her to? Amir al-Mu'mineen. And the mercy of Allah, not just to her, but to the orphans she's taking care of, that they are now being provided for. The mercy and lutf of Allah to Umar al-Anhu himself. Now why is it mercy to Umar? He's trying to take a nap and his nap is disturbed and now he has to deal with this issue. You know, one day he gets a little bit of rest. He's the he's leader of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want for Umar al-Khattab on the day of judgment to come and meet him. And there is a complaint that someone has against him. So Allah brought this woman to Umar while he is asleep so that he could take care of her affair and not have this responsibility on his shoulders on the day of judgment. SubhanAllah. And it brings a question. When you and I are presented with issues of somebody in need, somebody who requires something, somebody who asks some assistance, do we look at, look at it as an annoyance or as an opportunity? The spirit of a believer, when these opportunities come, how do we look at them? As an annoyance, as a fatigue, as an as a issue that bothers us, or as an opportunity, right? Imam al-Khattab, he was a man who would take his responsibility very seriously, right? When he would do his nightly patrols, and he would, in the middle of the night, walk around Medina, look for anybody who was in need. So one time he's walking and he finds a man sitting out, standing outside of a tent, and he hears the cry of a woman inside. And so he goes to him and, you know, he hears the cry, so he goes to him and he finds him and he says, what's going on? And he says, my wife is about to give birth, she's in labor and there's nobody to help her. So Amr al-Khattab, he right away goes to his wife, Um Kulthum bint Ali radiallahu The daughter of Ali was his wife, Um Kulthum. And you know what? You know, what's very interesting, the wording he used to address her, he says, Would you like to have some ajr that Allah has brought to your doorstep? Allah has brought an opportunity for you to come. And she says, what's going on? And he explains to her and he says, yes. And so she goes and she delivered, helps deliver the baby. And Amr al-Khattab took some food also when he left to cook for them. And so he's cooking while his wife is helping deliver the baby of this man's, the man's wife. And then Umm Kulthum comes out from the tent and says, tell your friend that, you know, his wife gave birth. But he says, Amir al-Mu'mineen, tell your friend. The man didn't know that was Amir al-Mu'mineen, right? And so when he realized that, he was again shocked. But the point being, There's an opportunity Allah has brought to your doorstep for some ajr. Do you want to take advantage of it? So brothers and sisters, Allah presents, presents to us opportunities throughout our lives. Small things, big things, that we can either look at our perspective really dictates how we respond. Do we look to it as an opportunity for khayr, an opportunity for ajr, an opportunity that perhaps Allah will prevent us from having a responsibility on the Day of Judgment? As a means that we raise our rank and our sins be forgiven? Wallahu fi awn al-abd ma kan al-abd fi awni akhih That Allah will be in your, uh, your assistance so long as your assistance of others? Or do we look at it as an annoyance or a fatigue? We ask Allah to give us tawfiq and make us amongst those who are anfa'un nas, lin nas, that we are most beneficial to the people and those around us. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah, we are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand, or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you, as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.